The universe was made for man, or to give it its scientific title, the Anthropic Cosmological Principle. Man has always tried to avoid his responsibility to God, and since the publication of Darwin's Origin of Species in 1859, he has claimed that science has no need of God. However, as scientists continued investigating this amazing universe, they gradually became aware that certain factors in its composition were absolutely crucial for life to exist upon this planet. So many of these became evident that even non-Christian scientists began to wonder about this. Let us begin by looking at just a few of these interesting observations. The Earth-Sun distance. The temperature of the Earth is very sensitive to its distance from the Sun. The calculations are complex because the present atmosphere keeps us warm at just the right temperature. However, it is agreed that quite a small change in this distance could result in catastrophic changes in our climate, as global warming publicity constantly reminds us. Some changes that have been given are the average temperature would rise one degree if we were only 0.16% closer to the Sun. If the Earth were 5% nearer to the Sun, the seas would boil. If the Earth were 1% further from the Sun, the seas would freeze. Thus, it seems we are just at the right distance from the Sun, and this distance is very finely balanced. The Sun is not an average star. Evolutionists claim that we are an insignificant planet going round an average star situated about halfway along the arm of a galaxy which is one of billions of similar galaxies. Thus they try to get people to believe that human life is just an accident that happened on this planet and that there may be millions of other planets with other life forms. But the Sun is not an average star. The majority of the stars produce much less light than the Sun, but many generate huge amounts of lethal radiations. Our Sun produces mainly light and heat, both necessary for life on Earth. Over half and possibly most stars are members of a system of two or more stars. If our Sun had a companion, its orbit would change so widely that our distance from it would change drastically and life would be virtually impossible. In addition, the Sun's heat and light output is very constant, whereas that of other stars can vary from 10% to 150,000%. Again, life could not exist with such variations. Who said our Sun was just an ordinary star? The role of the Moon. The Moon has many unusual features and important effects upon the Earth. Firstly, stabilizing the Earth. If the Earth were a perfect sphere, then the lightest impact from, say, a small meteorite would make it start to revolve and there would be no force to stop it slowly turning a complete series of circles. The effect upon climate and much else would be absolutely catastrophic and life would hardly survive at such an event. However, we have a slight bulge around the equator and the large moon nearby pulls on this and stops the Earth from any excessive wobble. Secondly, the tide it creates. The moon is the largest moon in proportion to the planet it circles, that is, the Earth. The pull of the moon on the seas causes a tidal bulge to travel round the Earth. 
This cleanses the seashores and stirs up the seas to bring nutrients to the surface for the feeding of sea creatures. Thirdly, its highly reflective surface. The moon has a very reflective surface, sending much of the light it receives onto the earth. Without this high reflection, every night would be extremely dark. But just a small part of the moon's surface visible gives considerable light at night. Fourthly, the moon's eclipses. The moon's diameter almost exactly covers the diameter of the sun during a full eclipse. There is no other moon going round a planet that does this. Eclipses have been recorded for centuries and have provided markers in historical accounts recorded by ancient writers. The coincidences of large numbers. As scientists explored further into nature, they began to find that large numbers were repeatedly found in relationships between seemingly unrelated subjects. For example, 10 to the power of 40, that is one with 40 noughts behind it, is found to be the relationship between no less than nine physical, atomic and astronomical values. Scientists could not understand why this huge number should appear so frequently in their measurements. Yet this is so. Surely it implied that there was a great mind at work in this universe. The unique nature of atomic forces. The forces that keep the atoms together are very finely balanced. At the centre of the atoms are protons that the electrons circle around. It has been calculated that if the mass of the proton was to change by as little as 0.2%, then the atom would become unstable. All atoms would disrupt and life become impossible. Carbon is particularly suitable for the many interactions involved in life. It has four outer electrons available for connecting with other elements. This allows it to combine with a huge number of other elements and the amount of energy in these combinations is small so that little heat is required to make such connections. In fact, many linkages can occur spontaneously. Professor Hoyle was a strong anti-theist but he did notice the fortuitous positioning of nuclear resonance levels in carbon and oxygen, two elements vital to the existence of life. He carried out a detailed examination of these resonance forces and he found that these coincidences were so surprising that he eventually said, a common sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics as well as chemistry and biology and that there are no blind forces worth speaking about in nature. The numbers one calculates from the facts seem to me so overwhelming as to put this conclusion almost beyond question. Professor Anthony Flew's change of view. As a philosopher for many years, Professor Flew was a foremost defender of the atheist and humanist viewpoint. However, in January 2004, he became a deist. That is, he believed that there was a supreme being, but denied that this was the Christian or the Muslim God. He said that the reason for his change was that there had to be an intelligence behind the integrated complexity of the physical universe. Thus, like Hoyle, when confronted by the overwhelming evidence that this universe must have a phenomenal designer behind it, he had both the honesty and the courage to not just change his viewpoint, but to announce this publicly. Another scientist, Dyson, said, as we look into the universe, and identify the many accidents 
and astronomy that have worked together for our benefit. It almost seems as if the universe must have, in some sense, known that we were coming. In summary, the amazing number of physical coincidences that had to be just right for man to exist on this planet faces scientists with the most obvious conclusion that this universe was designed by an extremely intelligent superior being with that aim expressly in mind. To avoid this stark conclusion the atheistic humanist has invented the concept of multiverses, that there are an infinite number of universes and we happen to inhabit the one that has all the right factors present. This is surely a philosophy of desperation. This theory has not a scrap of evidence in its support, yet scientists insist that their profession is based purely upon facts. When any man sees all this evidence and yet still denies the existence of God, he is not just blind, but willfully blind. And such a position will be rightly condemned by God. For the Christian, however, all this evidence only confirms what he already knows, that God is a loving God and calls upon all men to be reconciled to him through the sacrificial death of his only Son. Christ took the punishment that was due to us because of our rebellion against this holy yet loving God.